sleep in starlight Wake in sunshine Lullaby And don't you cry Tears are for the grown-up people You've got miles to go untroubled You've got miles to go Trace the clumsy cloud formations Celebrations in the sky what was meant to come is coming You got miles to go untroubled You've got miles to go to relax. Why? Because Daddy hasn't been home for a week, that's why. No, you're really dumb. But nice. You look thinner. Could be. How are the girls? Oh, fine. Just fine. I did everything I could to get out of it, Maggie. It's always the same. I don't know why I ever let myself believe it can change. I thought I had it worked out. As a matter of fact, I did work it out. I understand. Then Matthews had the stroke, and, well, I've got to cover for him. I understand. Oh, come on now, Maggie. The girls haven't been talking about anything else. Well, I was looking forward to it, too, you know. The last summer we could have had together before Lisa goes off to college. I'll make it up to them. And, and you. How can you make up the time that passes when you're not with us, Bill? How can you do that? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Daddy. Happy birthday to you. What a surprise. I'd forgotten about it completely. Bought the candles, but make a wish first. Okay. <laughs> oh, sad. <laughs> Very good. Let's see, what could this be? Open it. Okay, come on in, come on in. What a beautifully pretty package. <laughs> Now look at this car. Isn't that great? Isn't that cute? And the girls picked it all up themselves, okay. too. Oh, yes. Oh, it's just something I can use. It's not mine yet, so... Lisa, come on. So here you are. I was beginning to wonder where you were. I'm sorry. I was just trying to make it last. 
Do you remember when we came here for the first time and you taught me how to ride? That was so much fun. Oh, I really wish that we could go back there again and start all over. What was that horse's name? Lisa, are you still upset because we can't all be together this summer? The Attorney General's office would fall apart without you, and I understand. Well, we'll all do something else soon. Maybe even Christmas time. Red. That was his name. I remembered it was Red. <laughs> Is everything OK with you and Brian? Oh, sure. You know something? I'm beginning to miss you already. Won't be long before you start college, and then... I know. And then I'll be an old... I'll be an old married lady. Right. I'm very proud of you. Do you know that? Can I take you to the airport tonight? No chance. I've got to be there at midnight. That's too late for you. Come on. Last one back's a rotten egg. Come on. tomorrow? No, I've got practice tomorrow. How about after practice? Look, I've got it all arranged for Saturday. We'll have all day then. Okay. I love you. I love you. What is it? Really, Brian, you're no better than the rest of them. What are you talking about? I mean, why can't you all stare at someone else for a change? Why can't you all stop it and leave me alone? What's with you? Really, Brian, your friends are about the rudest people that I have ever met. I should like to be left alone, if you don't mind. Lisa! Lisa? Lisa, let us in. Lisa, come on. What's ever wrong? You can tell us. Lisa? Lisa, open this door. This is my house, you know. What could have happened? I don't know. Brian must have done something. Brian? Lisa? Lisa, please? Please what? Put on. She convinced me. You really have me worried. Are you all right? <laughs> of course I'm all right. He told me you've been avoiding him ever since the party. He stopped me after English, practically begged me to get you to wait for him after school. I... I don't understand why you make Brian beg. Look it, I don't want to talk to him. Why does he weasel around all of you trying to get Lisa to do something? Why doesn't he just talk to Lisa face to face? He's tried. Well, then why are you torturing him? What does she know? Maybe she's right. I don't know. For some reason, I always think of her as older. More experienced, I guess. 
used is more like it. Hey, hey Lisa, there's this new girl in my biology class, and I, she's falling all over Brian, just so you know. Hey, Lisa, do you want us to wait for you? Saved my life. I couldn't have gone around once more in a bed. Hey, whatever I did to make you angry, I'm, I'm sorry. We're still on for Saturday, aren't we? We'll get a grand tour of the campus and then a barbecue. Gosh, I really missed you, Lisa. Ryan. I don't think that we should see each other anymore. What? Well, we've gone together for a long time, and, and it's been really nice. But it's over now. Uh, hey, Lisa, what are you saying? You're free. I'm free. Daisy, darling. Bedtime. I'm reading. You're falling asleep. No, I'm not. Come on now. Good night. Sleep well, darling. Good night. Good night. See you in the morning. Okay. Lisa? How would you like to spend the summer with Aunt Ruth and Uncle Rudy in Denver instead of Tahoe, like we planned? You know, uh, your father can't join us uh, like he'd hoped to do. I don't know, I got to thinking, why go to Tahoe? It's uh, been so long since you've seen them. Oh, gosh, three years since Rudy retired. And you and Tracy love them so much. You know, we could have a marvelous time exploring around. And, and you and Tracy could ride and swim every day. It sounds great, Mom. Oh, it'd be great fun. And uh, if you're worrying about Brian, well, you'll see plenty of him this fall in college, right? Right. Well, it'll be a... It'll be a chance to get away from... everything we're used to. It was good to be on our own for a while, don't you think? It sounds really great, Mom. Yes. Well, uh, I discussed it all with uh, Daddy, and he thinks it's a perfect plan. Uh, of course, he wishes like anything he could be there with us, but... Uh, you know, I'd better not tell Tracy till tomorrow. She'll get so excited she'll be up half the night. <laughs> Don't be up late, darling. You're looking a little tired lately. I won't. Why have you covered your mirror? Well, sleep tight. You too. Oh, smile for gosh sakes. We're going to have a marvelous vacation. class, so we understand that part. So King Lear gives away everything he has to his three daughters, right, Millie? Wrong. Cordelia didn't get anything. Why not, Betsy? Because she refused to flatter her father like the others did. So vain and foolish, King Lear gives up everything he has to two daughters. But that's not enough, is it? He's still a powerful man, and they're suspicious people. Richard, what's the first sign that his daughters are afraid of him? One of his daughters tells him that he no longer needs his honor guard. 
What reason do they give him that he should give up his guards? Lisa? Lisa, what are you doing? supposed to bother you. What happened? I hurt myself, and it was a stupid thing to do. Where? Can I see? Did it bleed? A little. Lisa, Mom was upset. She was trying to act like she wasn't, but she was. You know the way she says, not now? No matter what you say or ask, she says, not now? Well, you know the way she was. Did you do something bad? Did Mom say that? No, she didn't say anything to me, but... It's nothing to worry about. Really? Really. And if Mom finds you still up... She won't. She went out. Where did she go? I don't know. About an hour ago. She was talking on the telephone all afternoon, and then a little while after I went into bed... She's back. Good night. Dad. Well, fancy seeing you here in the middle of the week. Hey, you all right? I'm fine. Lisa, what about this? S something stupid I did. <laughs> oh, Lisa, there must have been some reason. I'm going to have Dr. Phillips examine you first thing tomorrow. But all he does is take my temperature. That's all he ever does, and... and, and check my weight. Darling, you in trouble at school? With straight A's? Not exactly. Did you... Did you come here just because of this? Well, your mother was very concerned and, uh, and embarrassed about what you did. I wasn't scheduled to come back tonight, but when Mother phoned me and told me what happened, do you think I should see a psychiatrist? Lisa, it's not funny. If you could have heard the way that man... What's his name? Mr. Bernstein. If you could have heard the way he sounded when he told me what had happened. If you could have seen the other teachers the way they stared at me. I felt you had done the worst thing imaginable. I mean, Bill, you just don't... Let... Lisa, is there something that's bothering you? No. I just did it, that's all. I don't believe you, Lisa. Maggie. <laughs> you know, when I was in school, we used to fool around ourselves a little bit with homemade tattooing, but we did a much better job than you did. Let's go riding tomorrow. I've got a better idea. First thing tomorrow morning, you and I will go downtown, and we'll buy you some clothes. We'll splurge a little bit. And then we'll have a nice long talk over lunch, huh? Oh, <laughs> I'd love that. And I can make my meeting at the planning commission. Let's see, I don't have to be back until 6, so we can spend almost the whole day together. That'd be perfect. I'll make the appointment with Dr. Phillips. Fine. I knew you didn't come back just because of this. And I'm glad you're here anyway. Get a good night's sleep, darling. Good night. Please don't be mad at me, Mom. No, don't be silly. Mother's not mad at you. She's just worried about you, that's all. Good night, dear. Cloud formations, celebrate.
vibrations in the sky What was meant to come is coming You got miles to go You've got miles to go There to pull you down Are people everywhere You gotta plant your feet on the ground And tell them I don't care Roads when you meet them, and you'll meet them by and by. Hey, hey! Every mile's another milestone. You got miles to go untroubled. You've got miles to go. Hey, what do you think? It... Oh, hi. I think you made the right choice. I mean, I was ready to call it a day. Head for the beach. My name's Buddy. On the beach, huh? Well, uh, movies don't open up until six. Oh, how about a quiet afternoon at the museum? There must be one around. Blown all your money on clothes and afraid to go home? Too broke for a cab? Even a bus? We're incredibly wealthy. My father is a duke. Well, I'm incredibly poor. I'm a salesman. Junior, really a trainee. I wish you were a psychiatrist. I had psych one and two, that helped. What am I gonna tell the highway patrol when they pull me over and wanna know what I'm doing kidnapping a Duke's daughter? Call somebody for you? Well, I'm gonna go in and get a burger and fries. You want me to get something for you while we figure out what to do with you? I'm too young for this. And for this, I'm too young for all of them.
what happened. Are you all right? Answer me, are you all right? Why didn't you get out of there? What's wrong with you? This car stopped, and I just, I just got in. There was this guy, and he drove, drove to a hamburger stand. I don't know why I did it. I just did. And then he stopped the car. I, I started to think that, about the clothes that I had bought, and suddenly I felt that I was too young for them. Isn't it a weird thing? And then I lit a match and I started burning them right there in the car. Uh, I started burning the clothes right there in that poor guy's car. Isn't that a weird thing for me to do? It was like a dream. Lisa, why didn't you tell me you'd broken up with Brian? What's that got to do with anything? Are you serious? It's got to do with everything you've been doing lately. Darling, it's the most natural thing in the world to do. Strange things when you've had a lover's quarrel. It explains everything. No, it doesn't. Now, you've been going with Brian for years. Practically since junior high. So it's understandable that you'd be very upset about this and do all sorts of unusual things, especially at your age. But everything's going to be all right. Lisa, look, I like Brian very much. But if you don't get back together with him, it isn't the end of the world. No, I've never exactly shared your mother's enthusiasm for Brian, but I'll tell you one thing. If word gets around that you're available again, there are going to be a line of guys a mile long at our doorstep. I'm sorry I didn't tell you about it, Mom. It's not as terrible as you think. Things are going to start getting better very soon, I'm sure. All you need is a little time to get over it. I don't know what's the matter with me. She wants to eat alone. But just before she said she'd have lunch with us. You know, I am beginning to hate cottage cheese. Why don't boys ever get fat? They eat like maniacs. They're more active than we are. We're serene. I really feel so sorry, sorry for her. I mean, she has so much going for her, and yet she's really down. Maybe that's what's bugging her. In a couple of months, she'll be a nobody in college, just like the rest of us. I feel sorry for him. He's sort of wrecked. Well, now maybe he'll begin to pay some attention to you. Brian? Oh, Betsy, that's unthinkable. But you have thought of it. About once an hour, huh? <laughs> Brian wouldn't. <laughs> Besides, I couldn't. Lisa's my best friend. But she's not mine. And I'd die if she ever found out. Did she tell you about that thing with the guy in the car? In chemistry, did she tell you about burning her clothes? And Jim. Their parents think it's all just because of Brian. Or because she's got them old end of high school blues. If anyone needs a shrink, it's Lisa. Well, you know, it's not always easy for parents to admit that their daughter might be mentally ill. 
They think it reflects on them. Well, it'll sure reflect on them more if she dives off of a flagpole. Hey, I got a great idea. Why don't we have a heart-to-heart -heart talk with Lisa's mother? Have you ever seen how mad Mrs. Schilling can get? Well, if we don't do something, who will? Mr. Milne, don't you think it's weird that Lisa falls asleep in class? Some students do that. Late hours, late show on TV, late dates. It's not uncommon. But with all the crazy things she's been doing lately, don't you think that we could... Betsy, after that last incident with Lisa, the principal got a phone call from the district supervisor. The message was, handle Lisa Schilling with kid gloves. I'm sorry. I'll get it, dear. You get on with your homework. Go on. Hi. Well, Lisa's at the library this afternoon. We know. That's why we wanted to talk to you, Mrs. Schilling. We're not collecting for anything. I'll come in. Girls, sit down. Thank you. Mrs. Schilling. Uh, about Lisa, Mrs. Schilling. She... We're very worried about the way she's been acting. Oh, you mean because of what happened at school? Well... And about her burning her clothes? She told us about that. And today in class, she fell asleep for the third time this week. One minute she's fine, and the next she's so, so strange and quiet. Well, it's very considerate of you to be so worried about her. But you see, Mr. Schilling and I have had a long talk with Lisa. It's past the, the talking point, Mrs. Schilling. Thank you for coming by. Mrs. Schilling... Lisa needs professional help. What she probably needs is to stay away from you girls and your ideas. No. Lisa should see a psychiatrist, and soon. You don't know anything about it. Oh, yes, I do. I was in analysis for three years before I came here. And I know a great deal about it. Lisa's father and I know what's best for her. All we're trying to do... And I would appreciate it if you would all stop encouraging her in this way. Mrs. Schilling, we're only... Please. Well, that was a great success. Boy, you said it. That's a lost cause. Elizabeth, may I ask you a question? No, Betsy, you may not. Well, Mary Nell, do you have any more great ideas? <laughs> I'm not sure we should be doing this. We have to do something. She's losing her mind. It's that simple. Yeah, well, she's been acting really out of it lately. It's words like that that show how far we still have to go with you, Bets. There's just too much you still don't understand. Well, after all, you're the expert. So how much do I have to know?
you release him. Now, let's get cracking. We know what paranoia is, right? And we know what schizophrenia is, right? Betsy, make a list of Lisa's symptoms. Well, she seems to have some good days and bad days. And on those days, she seems to be two entirely different people from day to day. Right, a perfect case of split personality. Go on. Well, at her own party, she felt like people were staring at her. And, and for no reason at all, she got really defensive. Perfectly true. She thought we were criticizing her. A classic example of paranoia. Would you prefer to take over? Not really. Which means what? Only that it would probably be a lot better if one of us knew what she were doing. You no doubt? It's not a competition, Mary Nell. Then what are you sniping at me for? You don't have to be here, you know. You can leave any time you want to. Mary Nell. L let's just cool it, OK? I I'll get the door. I thought you wouldn't show up. I wouldn't have missed it. Do I make you nervous, Bets? A little. I'm glad you said that. Promise me something. Sure, what? That she'll always be honest? Well, I am most of the time anyway. But with me, must always be. Okay, it's not so hard. Mary Nell won't be, you know. Well, why not? She's probably the most outspoken person I've ever known. Outspoken, yes, but she's not always honest. I don't think that's fair, Lisa. She'll do the best that she can. I know she will. I know she will, too. I was only kidding. <laughs> I thought you were serious. But her best may not be as good as yours, or Elizabeth's. Well, let's get started. Uh, let's get the show on the road. Well, come on, poke around a little bit. Maybe we can all find out something together. No. What? If you want to play games, Lizzie, you can do that by yourself. True. Lisa, we believe you. What do you believe? We believe that, that you're really ill. That it just isn't a phase or anything. Yes, that's right. We believe that you're really ill. Uh, shall I sit on the couch I'm in? Would that be better? Sure, that probably would help. Just make yourself comfortable. Keep talking. Say anything that comes into your head. You can talk about your dreams, your fears, your fantasies, anything. Well, I do have funny dreams once in a while. Yeah, mostly in color, with sound. As if you were in a theater watching a movie? That's it, exactly. Tell us about your dreams. Well, usually they all start the same. There's, there's a uh, kind of a fog that, that keeps swirling around and changing colors. Really? That's fantastic. Well, anyway, when the fog finally clears, I can see very tall, very straight pine trees. Go on, go on. Don't stop. Well, I can only see the tops of them. You can see that, that they grow in a desert. A desert? It's, it's very hot. 
But there's no sun at all. No sun? No. And then I see it. What? An octopus. Then what? Then there are all sorts of tentacles crawling all over everything. Crawling around microphones, slithering through a sea of waving fingers, getting closer and closer and closer. Don't! Don't say it! <laughs> Genius! <laughs> Okay, you guys, okay. Lisa, we're trying to help you. We can't without you. Okay. Do you want to know what I'm thinking? I'm thinking of how much I hate all of you for doing this. your day. Elizabeth and I had ours. You were supposed to stay close to her. One gym class and you blow it. Mary Nell, can I help it if I happen to take longer showers than she does? Cool it. I see him. What do you want to bet? He says, hi, Mary Nell. Hi, Bets. And he yeah. keeps on walking. Hi, Mary Nell. Hi, Bets. Hmm. We agreed to stay with her. She's been fine the last few days. The point is, we aren't supposed to leave her by herself. I understand, but... Listen, I... I got a sweater and some pants in my locker. Go get them. And tell Mrs. Clark not to lock up the gym so we can give her a shower. Go on. Lisa? Lisa, please let me help you. No. Is it your parents? Brian, why can't you leave me alone? Even if you were a stranger, I uh, couldn't just ignore what you've been doing. And we're about as different from being strangers as we can get. I'm not the same person. Of course you are. No, I'm not. Mom, I don't want to buy any clothes because I don't... 
Look, are you worried about your finals? Yes, but that has nothing... You're going to do beautifully, darling. You always do. Mother, can you listen to me just once? Okay. I was upset and started doing strange things before I busted up with Brian, before finals, before anything like that. Now, listen. Let's just look ahead for a minute. This fall, you're going to go away to college. You're going to be free. No attachments. Free to make new friends, to be on your own. You know how wonderful that's going to be. You know how jealous I am of you. Really? Well, if you think it's going to be so much fun, then why don't you go? Lisa. Here I am, everybody. Don't I look dazzling? Won't Dad just love me in it? Oh, you look beautiful, darling. Uh, look, come on, you can help me put the rest of these away. Yourself. Now stop it. Darling, listen. No, no, no. Your sister's going to be all right now. Don't cry. Now it's all right. She'll be fine. You see? Please. Now that's right. That's right. You know. Now you, you can stop it yourself. That's right. Yes, you can stop it yourself. That's right, baby. That's right. She's fine now. Whatever it is, she's over it now. She scared me. She really scared me. Oh, Maggie, me. I'm not doubting you. I should be used to it. Every time something dreadful happens and the girls act like it's the end of the world, by the time you get here, everything's fine. All right, Maggie, all right. Now, what do you want me to do? I don't know. Her friends think she needs a psychiatrist. They're kids. Psychiatry is in this year, like ecology. We were kids who was eating goldfish. Maybe they're right. Our counselor at school didn't suggest she needed a psychiatrist, now did he? That girl out there does not need a psychiatrist. Why? Do I want to believe that? Bill, we're good parents, aren't we? I'd, I'd be so humiliated if she had to go to a psychiatrist. So guilty, like such a failure. And what would happen to your image? My image? Well, if it got out that your daughter might be mentally ill, then it would get out. Ridiculous image. Why are you putting yourself through this, anyway? Because I want to be sure that it's not my guilt or your career that's making us decide Lisa's just going through a phase. In a couple of weeks, she'll graduate and the pressure will be off and... You'll be away for the summer, and it'll all be forgotten. And if she's still upset when she starts college, all right, we'll, we'll take it to a psychiatrist then. But I don't think we ought to do anything drastic now. Let's wait and see, huh? We'll just have to watch her. You mean I'll have to?
back again and I'm never gonna let you go. Remember this place? The trees are bigger. I'm bigger. But it's still the same place. You remember, don't you? Of course you do. when Daddy used to bring us here, and when we'd go home, he'd, he'd tuck us both in bed and kiss us both goodnight. <laughs> and remember when Mommy had to make you a new dress because I got the one you had all dirty? Oh, oh I love you. Shh. They'll hear us. They'll take you away from me. Just a little while longer. <sighs> Someone could come again at any minute. You know, I better take you home and... I can't take you home. They don't understand. They take you away from me. did Jonathan Swift have in mind in Gulliver's Travels when he wrote about pygmies and giants? Art. I don't know. Mary Now? He was satirizing the King of England. Very good, Mary Now. All right, one person he was satirizing was the King of England. Who else was he satirizing? Lisa? Now, this is called encounter therapy. Oh. Now, this is difficult because we're not used to talking about our feelings. Betsy, you first. Taking each one of us in turn, look us straight in the eyes and tell us exactly how you feel about us. You must be completely honest. Sure. No, you must be absolutely honest, totally straight. Start with Lisa first. I feel... 
can't do it, hey, man. I don't know how. I... You start. I don't know how. That's just the point. No one knows how any longer. Go on. Just try. Lisa, I feel like what's happening to you could happen to me. I'm frightened by you. But I want to be closer and I want to help. Elizabeth? I like you a lot from a distance. And I feel like... I feel like that's the way you want it to be, that you always want to keep your friends at a distance. And I feel like we're not quite touching yet. And, man, I really love you a lot. But sometimes, like right now, you really drive me up a wall. <laughs> well, I'm sorry, him, man, but that's the way you, f you make me feel right now, and you told me to be totally honest. Well, that's honest anyway. Uh, Lisa, it's your turn. I can't. I don't feel anything or think about anyone but myself now. Then tell us how you feel about yourself. What do you feel about you? What scares me is that I don't know when it's coming or even what to expect. I try so hard, so hard to keep track. And everything just gets away from me. And then when I'm myself again, do you know I can't even, I don't even know if I was dreaming or if it actually happened. Okay. You feel scared. Now, what else do you feel? How do you feel? Bored. Yeah, you look bored. But then you always look bored. Does the way I look bother you, Lisa? Are you trying to get me mad? I'm not trying anything. You're getting angry, aren't you? I like you, Elizabeth. But? Hey, uh, why don't we just listen to some records, okay? I, I think that's a good idea. Your expert is sinking your teeth into me. Is that what I'm doing? Is that what it feels like to you? Listen, let's just forget about this amateur therapy stuff and have some fun, okay? Look, you were the one who asked me to come here and try and help her. Now, that's what I'm trying to do. Make up your mind. Well, I made up my mind. Therapy out, music and small talk in. Got it? Well, I'm leaving. I'm not afraid of you, Elizabeth. I'm just afraid of what I might do. Do you understand? Lisa. You do understand. Goodbye, Elizabeth. She's a big girl now. And if you continue to let her behave like a child, you're not helping her. You're only adding to her problems.
How is she? She's all right, dear. Next time I do something like that, will you please call the police? There won't be a next time. My father will see to that. I don't understand why Elizabeth didn't defend herself. She just lay there. We're all ready. You're feeling okay now? Sure. Can I go? No. I wish your dad were in town, Lisa, but... Boy, my mom is... She is going to blow her top. Lisa, let Mary Nell's mother and I worry about that, okay? became quite violent, Mrs. Schilling. There's no other way to describe it. My daughter and a friend had to pull her off, Elizabeth. Elizabeth Fraser? Yes. But the things that Lisa has done in school, Mrs. Schilling. I am familiar with what she has done in school. She's been under a lot of tension and strain. There is a great deal more now than when we were her age. Mr. Fickett, uh, I believe your specialty is engineering, not psychology. Mrs. Schilling, we're not attacking you. We're only trying to make you understand what your daughter has been doing, what we think she needs. A psychiatrist, yes. Yes, I know. Your daughter and her friends came by some time ago and told me the same thing. They did that because they were frightened by what Lisa's been doing. You're right. I, I don't understand. I don't, I just don't understand how my daughter and our personal matters have become a kind of public issue. Mrs. Schilling. And I'm tired of it, to be quite honest. Very tired of it. If she were mine, I'd have someone with her all the time. I will discuss that with my husband. And I really don't think you should let her go to school. That is for us to decide. Thank you for coming by. Good night. Good night. Good night. I don't want to go to school tomorrow. Lisa, what possessed you to attack Elizabeth Fraser? I don't know. Well, call her mother tomorrow and offer to pay any doctor bills there are. Please go to bed right now, dear. That's right. You and Mrs. Fraser go to the same beauty parlor. Go to bed, Lisa. But who are you going to call first? Mrs. Fraser or a psychiatrist for me? Lisa, would you please go to bed right now? I need help! Don't you understand that I am afraid of what I might do? I'm going to call your father. You go to your room, and I'll be up as soon as I finish talking with him, OK? Mr. Schilling, please. This is Mrs. Schilling. Bill? No. No, Bill. Not tomorrow night. No. Look, I... 
I need you to be here now. I can't handle this alone anymore. I don't care about anything else anymore. I need you here. Mother will be here any minute now. You remember this doll, don't you? Yes, I think so. I was so happy when I saw her in the store window. It was that shop next next to the. Next to. The... To the young collegiate shop. Please, Mr. Fickett, let me stay here. Lisa, your mother is very worried about you. She's talked to your father, and he's going to be here first thing in the morning. She wants to take you home, and I... <gasps> Lisa, your mother wants you to come home with her. I think you should let your mother take care of you. I don't want to go home! Lisa, I'll come and see you tomorrow. I don't know what will happen. I don't know what I might do. Lisa, you'll feel better as soon as you're home. And... Mary, now. Let Mr. Schilling in. Eleanor, call an ambulance, quickly. Silly to ask how you're feeling this morning. I'm okay. You both look tired. Well, we were up all night with a sick friend. How long do I have to stay here? We don't know. For a while yet. How's Tracy? She's great, and she sends you her love. Sometimes, sometimes we're not quite as smart as we try to convince you we are. I love you, dear. So very much. Doctor, these are Lisa's friends. 
This is Mary Nell Fickett, Hi. Betsy Goodman, Elizabeth Fraser, Brian Morris. This is Dr. Donovan. Dr. Donovan is a psychiatrist. Can, can we see her now? Oh, I think it would be all right. Aren't you coming with us, Brian? Uh, no, I'll stay here until I'll come by later. Doctor says that you're going to be fine. There won't be any scars or anything. Oh, Brian said that he'd be by later. He wants to see you alone. Lisa, we're so happy that you're going to be okay. I am so sorry for all that stuff I put you through. I am the world's dumbest person. to go. 